Hello my friends, today we are gonna be building this chat application using React, Node.js, MongoDB and Socket.io. We will fetch our previous conversation from DB and when I click one of them, it's gonna fetch all messages of this conversation. And I can send message to DB and we are gonna be using Socket.io. So it's gonna be an instant chat application. If I open up in the new tab, I'm sending a message and it's instantly here. I will write something here. Have some. It's really important to learn WebSocket implementations because nowadays almost every big application uses them. So I think it's really good project to start with. By the way, we created this social media application from scratch. If you didn't watch any, I highly recommend to watch them first maybe at least the last part because we are gonna continue with this design and backend API. Okay, I hope you will enjoy it. If you want to see more web projects like this, you can subscribe to the channel. If you are ready, let's get started. Okay, this is our main folder and here is our REST API with Node.js and MongoDB and this is our client site. Okay, if you don't have this folder, you can go to my GitHub account and here you can find YouTube repository and inside there is a branch here, my social app, if you go inside this repository and here you can pull this branch or download as a zip and you can open in the code editor. If you download from GitHub, you should install first this dependencies. To do that, I will open two terminals here and first one will be our API site. I will open this folder, API, and I will say npm install. I will do the same thing for React application. I will say cd client and npm install. So after that, it's gonna install all files and it's gonna be ready to run. Okay, it's ready. Right now, if you didn't watch previous video, I'm just gonna give some short brief. Here, our REST API, we have models here, post and user, and our routes, we can register and log in with these users. And here, update user, delete user, we can get users, get all friends of one user, we can follow and unfollow them, something like that. So if I run this application, it's not gonna connect the MongoDB because we don't have here .env file. So I will close them and here I will create my env file. And inside I'm gonna paste my MongoDB URL. So we are gonna keep this URL in the env file. So even if we upload this file, in the GitHub or any other sharing platforms, nobody can see this EMV file. Okay, so I will close this. Right now I can start my REST API. I will say yarn start. Okay, backend server is running and connected to MongoDB. And for here, we have a React application in the source folder. We have pages, home page, login, register page, and here user profile page. So I'm gonna create one more page here. It's gonna be messenger, messenger, and inside this file, it's gonna be messenger.jsx and my CSS file. Okay, so I can create my function here. I will say RFC. So I will indicate here my CSS file, it's gonna be messenger.css and here I will give class name it's gonna be messenger so let's write here something and try I will run my application yarn start so as you can see it's coming directly to register page because we don't have any user so I will go to login page and here Let's say Jane, 
gmail.com and my password. I will log in. Okay, right now it's in home page. So how I'm gonna open Messenger here? I will go to app.js and here we have router and when we try to go to login page or register page it's checking whether there is a user or not and if there is a user it's going to home page if there is no we can open login and register page so I will do the same thing I will copy this route and here if I try to go to messenger page this URL but this time it's gonna be if there is no user it's gonna redirect to this page which is register right now so if there is a user we can go to messenger page okay let's try here I will say messenger and we are here okay I will close this I can close my github and here this folder right now I'm gonna arrange my page here firstly it's gonna be top bar before this messenger I will say top bar so I have to import this component I will say import top bar from this is page folder and here components top bar okay so I can't write this like that because I can't return multiple components so I can create here one div or I can use fragments okay let's try awesome so there will be three elements here one of them will be chat menu and here chat box and here there will be our online friends so I will delete this and here I will say chat menu and chat box and finally chat online so I'm going to CSS file and here I will say messenger our main div I will give first height if I say here 100 VH it's gonna overflow because we have a top bar here so what I'm gonna do I will say calculate and insight 100 VH minus 70 pixels so I will make this container flexbox because our items will be horizontal menu box and online so I will say here chat menu I can give specific width but I will say here flex three and half I will duplicate this and for box it's gonna be five and half and it's gonna be three so what I did here I split this container into 12 parts and three and half will be menu five and half will be chat box and others will be online menu right now I'm gonna give wrapper for each divs I will say chat menu wrapper and here chat box wrapper and online wrapper why I did this because I'm gonna give some padding inside these divs so if I give directly this menu or chat box it can change these sizes I don't want to do that so I will write wrappers so let's say here menu and box and online okay but there is something wrong here it should be around here let's check ah okay I didn't say online here okay awesome let's give padding for these wrappers I will copy this and here chat menu wrapper and chat box wrapper and online 
and I will give padding 10. Let's give background color and see better. Okay, as you can see, we have padding. So I will write here height 100%. So it's going to contain whole height here. Absolutely. So let's delete this. Right now I can start adding something inside this menu. I will go to here. And first I'm going to add input. I can give placeholder. It's going to be search for friends. And class name. Let's say chat menu input. I will copy this and in the CSS. Let's write actually after this menu. I will save it and I will give padding from top and bottom. It's going to be 10 pixels and for right and left it's going to be 0. I don't want any border, it's going to be none. But maybe I can give a line here. So I can give border bottom. It's going to be a one pixel, solid, and let's say gray. Right now I can add here my conversations. Here after this input, I can create here divs, but I want to open new component here. So I will say conversations. I will create quickly conversations.jsx and CSS file. Actually, it's going to be singular. Okay, I can create my function rfc and here my CSS file. And here class name, let's say conversation. So it's going to be two items here. First one will be conversation image and conversation name. Let's create image here. Class name, conversation image. And here I will say span and conversation text or name. So I will write here a custom image. Okay, if I write here conversation, I will call this component and let's see. Okay, it's here. Our image and name. So let's arrange this image and this name. I will go to CSS file and here First is going to be our div conversation and display flags because it's going to be horizontal. I will center these items like that. It's here right now. I will give padding and here for this image width 40, height 40. It's going to be circle or the radius 50%. Let's see. Okay, I will cover this image. Object width. And I can give some space between this text and image. I will say margin right 20 pixels. Okay. And for this name, I will just say font weight 500. It's going to be thicker. Okay, nice. I'm going to give click effect here. I will say cursor pointer. Okay. And when I hover this, I will say background color, something light gray. Let's write gray and I can choose lighter one like this. Let's try maybe lighter. 
Okay, it's nice. I will give a margin here. Okay, something like that. So if I write here more conversations, like this. Okay, perfect. So let's create chat box. It's going to be two items here, our all conversation and some input to send our new messages. Okay. Inside this wrapper, I will say chat box top and bottom. And here again, I will create another component. It's going to be message. Let's close this and here search and inside message.jsx and CSS. I will create quickly CSS file. And class name will be message. So let's decide here what we are going to do. So here is going to be user image. And then it's going to be message. And under this div, it's going to be message date. So let's create. I will say message top. And here bottom. Firstly, I'm going to create image. Let's paste this image here. And after that, I will create p tag and inside, let's say, hello. Okay. I will give class name, message image. And for this p tag, message text. So inside this bottom, I will say one or echo. So let's write here and see at the same time, I will say message component. I will call this. Actually, I will create a couple times more. Okay. I will go to message CSS and here I will say message. It's going to be display flex, but this time flex direction will be column. Flex direction, column. Let's arrange this image first and see better. We 32 and high 32 and it's going to be circle and object with cover. So let's see. Okay, this is under this image because we didn't make this container flexbox. I will say here message top it's going to be display flex. Okay, nice. I will give here a space. I will say margin right 10 pixels. Okay. And for message text, I will give some padding inside this text. Border radius, let's say 20 pixels. And background color, it's going to be something blue. I will say 77F2. Okay, let's change this text color. It's going to be just white. And I will give some max width because when we write here, let's say something long. Like this. As you can see, it contains whole screen here. I will say Max width is going to be 300. Okay, so I can give margin for each. So I will say margin top 20 pixels. Okay, nice. I can change this date. Message bottom. Font size 12 pixels. And I will give margin again. Okay. So they are other users' message. What about our own message? I will come here and I will take a probe from Messenger. It's going to be on. I will say 
if this message on and on class I will say align items flex and so let's try I will give on class here as you can see they are in this site right now let's change this color also I will copy this and here if message on it's gonna affect our message text I will say background color light gray but lighter and font color will be just black something like that okay I will reduce this like that and I will delete them and here I will copy this and I'm gonna create a logic here I will say if there is own it's gonna be message and own if it's not it's gonna be just message so in the messenger let's give here own true as you can see first and third one is from another user and this is from us okay nice right now I can create your input here for chat box bottom let's create text area I will delete them and placeholder I will say write something let's give class name here I will say chat message input or whatever you say and after that it's gonna be a button I will say just send and for class name chat submit button I will copy this where is our CSS file here I will take this here and after this chat box I will say chat box bottom margin top 5 pixels and I'm gonna make this flex box because text area and button will be in the same row and here I will just center them so let's check so I will separate them it's gonna be end of the chat box so I will say just five content space between okay of course I'm gonna make this bigger I will say chat message what was the name chat message input it's gonna be with 80% and height let's say 90 pixels and I will give padding inside something like that let's arrange this button chat submit button I will say width 70 and height 40 there is no border and border radius 5 let's see okay I can change color and give cursor pointer and background color let's say teal and text color will be white nice but as you can see our messages height is really small if I write here more message like that it's gonna overflow as you can see so to prevent this I will go to this wrapper and here let's say after this I will say display flex and flex direction will be column because our messages and input and here it's still like this because we didn't say overflow scroll for this box I will say chat box top it's gonna be right a hundred percent and overflow y is gonna be scroll okay awesome but as you can see it's really close to right I will say padding right 
it's gonna be 10 pixels okay it's much better so we almost finished our design let's create this online section inside this wrapper I'm gonna create another component it's gonna be chat online let's close them let's close them actually from here also and here I will say chat online chat online chess x and chat online css let's create here chat online css okay class name chat online and inside i will create another div it's gonna be friend div and for each friend it's gonna be image container container and inside image and after that it's gonna be chat online page and for this image let's actually copy from this conversation I will copy this source okay so after this image container I will say chat online username or just name let's say John Doe actually it's not gonna be there it's gonna be span okay let's write here chat online okay and let's go to a CSS file I will say chat online friend our friend container it's gonna be display flags I will center items and font width will be 500 for this username and I will say cursor pointer for this image it's gonna be chat online image I will say with 40 height 40 border radius 50% and object width cover semicolon here okay let's see it's different name chat online image ah I didn't give okay I will say class name chat online image okay perfect so I'm gonna indicate here online page so it's gonna be position absolute if I'm using position absolute the parent div should be position relative let's write them position relative and for this page I will say position absolute let's give first width and height 10 pixels height 10 pixels it's gonna be a circle and background color will be lime green let's see first as you can see it's here but I said position absolute so I can move this here so I will say top 0 right 0 okay nice maybe 2 okay it's better so I can give border for this image I will say border and one pixel solid and white maybe some margin oops not for image it's gonna be for image container okay nice maybe I can reduce this image it's really big perfect so if I write here more friend it's gonna be like this 
maybe I can give margin top here. Okay, nice. So we created our design. Right now we are going to use our API and we are going to send our messages and we are going to check our conversations and check this conversation messages. Okay. So let's close them. I will close this client and here for API, I'm going to create two other models here. First one will be conversation and second one will be message. And as you remember, what we are doing, I will just copy this and inside conversation, I will delete them. And here it's not going to be post schema. I will choose this, this and this one. It's going to be conversation. And inside it's going to be only members. It's going to contain our user IDs. So I will say type it's going to be array. Okay, that's all. Because it's not going to contain anything. It's going to be just conversation ID and members. Let's say members. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and inside message, I will change name. It's going to be message. And inside first will be a conversation ID. Type will be a string. And sender type will be again string. It's going to contain our sender ID. And finally, I will write here text. Let's put here comma and text. And it's going to be a string again. Okay, that's all. So I will go to roots. So I'm going to create conversation and message roots. I will say conversations.js and one more messages.js. Let's close them and remember what we are doing here. We are calling express router here and then our model. And then finally, we are exporting this router. So let's copy this here and I will export. Okay, I can close this. Right now, we don't need this post. I'm gonna call my conversation model. I will say conversation. So I will copy this and I will do the same thing for message. Let's change it. Message model. Okay. For this conversation, I will create new conversation and I will get conversation of user of a user okay so how i'm gonna create new conversation i'm gonna use this router i will say router and it's gonna be post method inside i'm gonna use main url here and after that request and response okay so let's create first new conversation object i will say const new conversation so it's going to be using this conversation model. I will say new model and inside I will say members. It's going to be array. I will say request body and sender ID. I can copy this. And here it's going to be receiver ID. So what's this body as we did before? If I open here postman. If I write here conversation and if I choose post, it's our body. I'm going to give here sender ID. It's going to be our user ID. Let's say something. And after that, receiver ID. It's going to be another user ID. So this is our body object. To use that, I will say request and body and inside sender ID. Oops, sender. So it's gonna take this user ID and add inside member. And for this one, it's gonna take this user ID and inside these members. Okay, 
So how I'm gonna add this inside MongoDB? I will write here try and catch block because we are gonna be using async function. Catch if there is an error. I will send this error. I will say response. I'm gonna give here status. It's gonna be 500, which means error inside DB or server. And here JSON error. I'm gonna send this as JSON file. Okay, so to try this, I should write here async because we are gonna fetch or add data to database. I will say here const saved conversation and then I will say await new conversation and I will say save. So if it's successful, it's gonna return as response. I will say response and status code will be 200, which is successful and JSON sent this conversation. Okay, I will save. So I'm gonna open my MongoDB here. And I'm gonna go to my collections. If you remember, we have collection here, which is social. And inside we have users and posts. I will go to users and choose two users here. First one will be Jane. And second, let's say John. I will take this user ID here and in the postman. Sender ID will be Jane's ID and receiver ID will be John's ID. It's gonna be conversations. If I send, it's not gonna work because we didn't add inside our index.js. I will go to index and here, as you remember, we called our post root, user root. I will do the same thing for conversation and for message. So how I'm gonna use these roots? I will come here. If you remember for posts, we are using this URL for users, for authentication. So I will copy this and first one will be, let's take this and conversation. And here it's gonna be a message. So whenever we go to this URL, it's gonna call this conversation root. It's gonna look inside this conversation root. And when we make post or get request, it's gonna run one of these functions. For this case, we are using post method and main URL is gonna look here. Okay, it's post method and main URL and it's gonna run this function. So let's try. I will send, as you can see, 200 and it's gonna return us saved conversation here. But something is wrong here because it's null. Ah, okay, it's not capital, it's gonna be ID. So let's go to MongoDB and delay previous one. We made a mistake there. So I will go to conversations and delete this. So I'm gonna send new one. Let's check. Okay, it's Jane ID and John. I will refresh page. And as you can see, it's here. Members, Jane's ID and John's ID. Perfect. So I can create another conversation. Let's go to user and for other users. Let's take this one, Lama. And for body, I will write here. It really doesn't matter sender or receiver because it's inside same array. So I will say send. Okay, perfect. So how I'm gonna get conversation using user ID? Let's come here and I will say router. And this time it's gonna be get method. It's gonna use main URL and I will give a parameter here. It's gonna be user ID. Async function and request and response. I will open my 
function and here again try catch block I will copy this and paste here okay so what I'm gonna do I will say const conversation and it's gonna be await and for conversation model I will say find so what I'm gonna find I should write here a condition I will say members So it's going to check these members and for example for this id it's going to look into these members and try to find this id okay this conversation includes this id and this conversation also so it's going to take two of them and send us and for example for this id it's going to look into this members array okay it includes but it doesn't include so it's going to turn only this one okay so how I'm going to check inside this array, I will say in and I'm going to use this ID. I will say request and params and user ID. Okay, so I can send this. I will say status 200 and JSON is going to return this conversation. Okay, that's all. Let's try. I will go to postman we don't need this body anymore because we are going to use this get method and here i'm gonna write my user id let's say for jane i'm sending and as you can see it returns two conversations first one and second one if i write here john's id and send Right now it returns only one. Okay, perfect. So we completed our conversation route. Let's go to messages. And for these messages, I will say again, add and get. So I will do the same thing. Router and post method is gonna be main URL and async request response I will open my function and inside I will create new message const new message and here new message model and inside I'm not going to indicate any specific body element I will just say request and body so it basically takes everything inside body and paste inside new message okay so try and catch response status 5 and json sent this error and for here i will say const saved message it's gonna be await we are gonna await this process i will say new message and save so after saving, if there is no error, I can send this saved message. I will say status 200 and JSON saved message. Okay, that's great. But before let's look into this model. What we are going to send from request and body is going to be conversation ID, sender and text. So I will come here. Let's delete them and I will write here messages. And here I should indicate my conversation ID. Let's look here, for example, for this one, Jane and John. I will choose this conversation ID. And here, let's delete. I will say conversation ID is going to be this string. And for sender, who is going to send, let's say Jane. I will copy this. And finally, it's going to be text. Hey, John. I'm Jane. Of course, it's going to be post method. Let's try. Okay. ID, conversation ID, sender, text, and our timestamps. Perfect. Let's change this. And it's going to be from John. 
Hey Jane, I'm John. Let's send. Okay. And for second conversation, let's write here something also. I will choose this ID. Conversation ID. And from Jane again. Hey Lama, I'm Jane. Let's send. Let's look into our messages. It's not here because we didn't refresh. Okay, here and inside. And here, as you can see, our three messages. Awesome. So how I'm gonna so how I'm gonna fetch all messages inside a conversation? Let's come here. I can close this. And for get method, I will say router. This time it's gonna be get and main URL async request and response. Again, try and catch. Let's copy this. And by the way, as you can see, we are not making any error handling. I don't wanna waste time. Maybe we can take care of this in the future. But for now, it's totally okay. So what I'm gonna do here, I will say const all messages. I will say messages and await. It's gonna look into this message model and try to find what it's gonna find. I will write here my condition. If conversation ID equals request params of course, we didn't give here. Let's give conversation ID. I will copy this and paste here. Okay, so basically it's gonna try to find all messages which has conversation ID is this ID. Okay, and then if everything is okay, it's gonna return us 200 and JSON these messages. I will save and let's try. For example, for this conversation, let's paste here. It's gonna be get method. I will send and here. Hey John, I'm Jane and hey Jane, I'm John. Perfect. So what about other one? Let's copy this and here, oops, I will send and it's here. There is only one message. Awesome. So I can close this postman and for our client side, this React application, I can fetch all conversation of this user right now. So let's do this. I will close them and this API and I will open my client. Let's close this pages and messenger. Okay. So how I'm gonna fetch all data here? Firstly, let's check our current user after login process. I will say const user and I will say use context. Which context I'm gonna use? If you remember, it's here, this auth context. I will write here out context. I'm gonna import this from here. Okay. So let's check this. What we have inside. I will go to inspect. And here, as you can see, there is an object. And inside this object, we have our stick, cover picture, description, everything belongs to this user. For followings. It's following one user, there is no followers, something like that. So if you are confused about this context and this login process and other things, I highly recommend you to watch previous video if you didn't before. Okay, let's continue. I will write here a use state hook. It's gonna be our conversations. 
and set conversations it's gonna be your state and initial state is gonna be empty array so I'm gonna write here use a packed hook so what it's gonna do whenever we refresh the page it's gonna try to fetch all conversations from this current user which is Jane right now let's give a space here and inside I'm gonna create a function I will say const get conversations okay it's gonna be async function and inside this I will say const response because it's gonna return us a response I'm gonna use here axios await axios is gonna be get method and remember what we are using is gonna be conversations URL and additionally I'm gonna use my user ID user dot ID of course I should import this axios okay I can't do this automatically let's write here axios and from axios of course I should cover this with try and catch and catch error I will just console log this okay let's see this response what is gonna return us I will say console log and response let's refresh and open our inspect okay it's not working because we didn't give any dependency here it's gonna be empty dependency it warns us because it says missing dependency we should add here user or user.id doesn't matter and after that I'm gonna call this function okay I can try right now as you can see we have response and inside data and this is first conversation and this is second one okay so right now I can update my conversation here to do that I'm gonna use set conversations and instead of this console log I'll say set conversation and it's gonna be response and data right now I can use these conversations so how I'm gonna use this instead of writing this conversation again and again I will use here a map conversations and map and for each conversation I'm gonna return this component if I refresh there will be two components here so how I'm gonna use them I can pass this as prop I will say conversation and I'm gonna send this conversation okay so let's go to this component here I can take this prop so let's check here what we have inside this conversation we have just ID and members so one of them is my ID and second one is the second users so I can use this ID I will create here new state again const let's give space user and set user and new state it's gonna be null at the beginning so right now I can fetch this user what I will do I will create a use effect empty array here for now so right now I can find this user ID I will say const friend ID and I will say conversation and for members array find and for each element if member which means this first one and second one if it equals our current user ID of course we don't have any current user here I can pass this also I will say current user it's gonna be user because remember what we did here okay so I will take this prop also I will say current user right now I can reach my user ID 
of course it's not gonna be equals it's gonna be not equal because we are looking for our friend right now we have this id how i'm gonna use this i will create a function here i will say const get user it's gonna be async function because we are gonna fetch data and here again const response and await axios which url i'm gonna use it's gonna be users and here let's remember api and users root as you can see we have a function here it's going to be users url and after that as you can see we have queries here we can find this user by user id or username so i'm going to use user id here if i write here query it's going to be user id and equals this friend id okay of course i forget try catch error and console log okay let's console log this and see what we have i will say response and i will call my get user function here and inside these dependencies whenever our current user or conversation changes this user effect will be run so let's write them current user and conversation let's try okay find undefined of course it should be members right now as you can see we have response and inside data as you can see our friend it's all information and second one data and this is john awesome so i can set this user i will delete this and here i will say response and data so i can use this user right now instead of john though i will say user and username let's see i will close this as you can see john and llama and for these images i will delete this and again so i need a logic here we are using assets url here i will use my emv and here as you can see this is our assets folder i can use this folder i will come here and say const public folder it's going to be process and emv and this url so i will say here if there is a user and profile picture use it if there is no use public folder and let's check what we have here public images we have person and inside this person we have no avatar.png we are gonna use this okay i will say person and no avatar.png oops okay let's check john or llama doesn't have any profile picture so it's gonna use this one have some so let's take care of this chat box i will go to messenger let's close this i will create another states two states it's gonna be current chat let's make this capital and the initial state is gonna be now we don't have any chat here in the initial state okay it's warning about conversations because we write here twice and second one will be messages okay let me explain okay whenever i click one of my conversation current conversation will be this chosen conversation 
and I'm gonna fetch all messages of this conversation. Okay, so for this wrapper, I can actually write here something else for the initial state because we haven't chosen any of these conversations. We shouldn't see this. So I will say if there's a current chat, so I will close here. Let's delete this one. Of course, I should use fragments and here. Okay, so if there is no current chat, I will write here, let's say span and insights, open a conversation to start a chat. Let's see. As you can see, we don't have any conversation and it writes here. I can arrange this. Let's give class name here. No conversation text. I will copy this and inside CSS file. Here I can say actually position absolute. If I do this, I should make this container relative, which is chat box wrapper. Here I will say position relative. Okay, so let's say top 30% okay somewhere here maybe less maybe 10% okay so I will say font size a little bit bigger and color something again light gray I will choose here Okay, I can make this center. I will say text align center. And I don't want any cursor. It's gonna be default. Actually without align is better or not. Let's check. Okay, I like it. I will delete this and close this CSS. Okay, so how I'm gonna change the current chat? I will come here for each conversation. I will create here a div. It's not going to change anything, but I can write here right now on click event. I will say set current chat and it's going to be this C. So I will write here console log and we can see better. I will say current chat. Okay, there's a problem here. Let's check conversation. Okay, I will say if there is user and here also. Okay. Right now, I will open my console. I will clear. So there is no conversation right now. If I click one, as you can see, a conversation with John, if I click this, conversation with Lama. Okay. So if I have any conversation here, I can fetch messages. Let's delete this and here another use effect. Okay, I will create my function get messages. It's going to be async function. And I will say const response and axios and get method. I'm going to fetch messages. So I will write here messages. And here I should indicate my conversation ID, which is current chat ID. Dot ID. Okay. So after that, I can update my messages here. Set messages. I forgot again. Try catch. Console log error. And here, after response, if it's successful, 
it's going to update my messages and response and data. So I will call this get messages function. And here we need missing dependencies. It's going to be current chat because whenever it changes, it's going to fire this use effect. So I will write here console log messages. And here, for any case, I'm going to add question mark because it can be an error like in the conversation component. So right now I will say console log, show me my messages. Okay, it's undefined, it shouldn't be. Let's check our network here. It's still undefined. Okay, it's here. But something wrong. Ah, I forgot. Oh, wait. It's really important, by the way. Don't forget this async await and try catch. So I will refresh. And I will choose John. Right now, as you can see, our message is here from John and from Jane. Sorry, opposite. <laughs> anyway, so if I choose Lama, as you can see, only one object here and it's, hey Lama, I'm Jane. Perfect. So I can use these messages here right now. So I will delete this and here for messages, I don't need them, I will delete Okay, so I will use these messages. I will say map and for each message I'm gonna call this component and I will say message and equals this message. Okay, I will go to my message component and here I will say before on message Let's create this on also. So how I'm gonna decide this on? I will say if message dot sender sender ID equals user dot ID. Remember this is our current user. If it equals sender ID, it means we are owner this message. Okay. So I can use it instead of this text. I will write here message dot text. And here, if I write here message dot created at, it's not gonna show us formatted version like one hour ago. Let's see. As you can see. So how I'm gonna transform this? I'm gonna use time ago library here. I will say import format and from time ago JS. So right now I can use this format. I will cover this and here it's going to be format. Perfect. As you can see, it's our message. We are owner here. If I go to John, this is our message and this is John's message. Have some. I can fetch again this user for profile picture, but it's not necessary right now. We will take care of this later. And here, what can we do more? We can add new message. Let's do that. I will write here new message. And at the beginning, it's going to be empty. And here, for text area, I will say on change. So whenever it changes, it's going to update our message. New message is going to be E and here set new message. It's going to be event dot target and value. And I will give here our value. It's going to be new message target. Okay. So if I click this send button, I will write here on click event. 
it's gonna be handle submit okay let's create this function const handle submit it's gonna be e I should write here e dot parent default because otherwise when we click this it's gonna refresh the page okay so what I'm gonna do here I can create here a message object to make it easier let's say const message and it's gonna be sender sender ID will be our current user ID dot ID and text will be our new message and conversation ID it's gonna be current chat dot ID it's gonna be a column okay so right now I can send this message it's gonna be async function and I will write here try catch error console log error and here I will say const response is gonna be await axios right now I can use post method and for messages I will create new message here and I'm gonna send this message so after sending I wanna see this message here inside this box so what I'm gonna do here I will say set messages and inside this array everything will be same all messages will be same inside we are gonna just add additional message here so you can use here spread operator and say add my response and data so let's choose John hello from react I will send okay I can see here message is not iterable ah sorry it should be messages here and again as you can see it's here it means it's going our DB let's try again test and send as you can see it's here if I refresh the page I'm opening John as you can see they are still here because they are in the RDB let's check here in any case I will refresh here as you can see hello from react and test perfect it works so after sending something as you can see it's still here I don't want to see that so here I will say set new message it's gonna be empty again so I'm sending as you can see it's empty perfect and one more thing here I will close this as you can see we added new message but we can see it we should scroll so how I'm gonna scroll automatically to do that I should use reference for each messages so whenever we add new one it's gonna scroll automatically the last message so I will use here use ref I will say const let's say scroll ref it's gonna be use ref I will import it okay so where I'm gonna use this for this message but I can't use this here I should write here a div don't worry it's not gonna affect anything so here I will say ref it's gonna be our scroll ref so I can use this right now so I don't wanna write this here because it's not only our messages for example when John sends us a message he should again scroll so instead of this I will write here another use effect and I will say use effect and here our dependency will be messages 
because whenever messages change, we should fire this use effect. So I will say screw ref and current, I will say question mark here. And then I'm going to use some useful method here. I will say scroll into view. So it's going to scroll to the end of the div. But if I do that, it's going to be really sharp. There will be no transition. So I can make this slower. I will write here behavior. And it's going to be smooth. So let's try. Oh, sorry, it should be a question mark here, not here. Let's try again. I'm clicking John. As you can see, it was here. Let's refresh again. It's going to the last one. Let's test it. I will say test, scroll. I'm sending. As you can see, it's here. So we can fetch our conversations. We can fetch our messages. We can add new one. So we finished our chat application for this REST API. Right now, we are going to use Socket.io and send these messages instantly. For example, if I open here new tab and localhost, I should log in first, of course. Let's log in as John. I will log in and I will go to messenger. There is something wrong with this image. Let's check. Okay, we are not using public folder here because it's calling 3000. Let's change it. I will go to conversation. I should use it here. Let's try again. Okay, perfect. So if I click chain, as you can see, I can see all these messages here. But if I send something and come here, we can't see anything. I have to refresh the page to see this new message. Okay. It should be instant chat. So to do that, some people are using Ajax, but it's not the efficient way because you are sending requests to your server. We are going to use Socket.io. So what's this Socket.io? Socket.io enables real-time, bidirectional and event-based communication. Okay, that's all I think. Let's go to Wikipedia, maybe. Socket.io primarily uses the WebSocket protocol with polling as a fallback option. Okay, there is some bullshit things here, so I will explain you. So I created some basic presentation here. Basically, it's our Socket server. Whenever any user connect to our application, it's gonna connect this Socket server and they will have their own socket ID. And inside the server, there is no DB. It's not writing any data. It's not reading from any DB. It's just connecting to your computer and using only events. What I mean by saying connecting your computer? The socket server using TCP IP connection. So I'm not gonna deep dive into this. So let's say this user want to send an event to this user. So this user is going to send this send message event to server and it's going to take this and say, okay, this is a send message event. It came from socket ID 4 and receiver is 3. So instantly it's going to send this message to socket 3. It's going to be our socket ID and sender will be 4 and this is text message. It's hard to understand a little bit, I know. But you will understand everything. We are going to make an awesome project. And here we have a cheat sheet. You can use this cheat sheet also. We can see here which methods we are going to be using. Firstly, we are going to connect our socket server. Let's do this actually. So right now, I will create one more folder here. It's going to be our socket server. 
and let's create new terminal here. I will go to socket and inside let's create our not application. I will say npm init and I will say yes. Okay, our package JSON is here. To start this with nodemon, I will add here nodemon library. I will say yarn add nodemon. And additionally, I'm gonna add my socket IO. I will say socket.io. Okay. Okay, they are here. So I will say here start. And here nodemon index.js. We don't have any index.js, let's create. I will say index.js and inside this I will call my socket IO. I will say const IO and requires it's gonna be socket IO. So I should indicate here my port number. Let's say 8900. If I write this like that, I can't use this inside my client because by default it doesn't allow anyone to connect the server. So I should write here, I will delete this and my config. It's gonna be course. And I will write here my React application URL. It's gonna be origin and HTTP localhost and 3000. Let's close. Okay, so right now I can write this. I will copy and paste and inside this after every connection I will write here console log a user connected. Okay so I will close my application here I will kill this process so here I'm gonna add library for react I will say socket.io and client. Okay, it's ready. I can start my socket server. I will say yarn start. And for client also. Okay, I will go to messenger. Let's close this old one. Okay, I can go to my messenger here, source, pages and messenger. So I can call this socket.io here, I will say import, it's gonna be io and from socket.io client. So I'm gonna create one more use state here, it's gonna be socket. Initial state will be null. And here, let's create next use effect. And here, the dependency will be empty array. I will say set socket. It's gonna be IO and insight. I'm gonna indicate my socket server URL. As I said before, it's not HTTP connection here. So I will delete this. I will write WS, it stands for WebSocket. And here, I will say localhost and port number. I'm gonna save. Right now, as you can see, this user is connected. I will refresh this also. John is connected also. Awesome. So let's look at this cheat sheet here. What it says, we are not gonna use any rooms because it's not common chat application, it's just private one. And here, to send something to all connected clients, use this one. If you are gonna send something private, you can use io.2 and indicate here socket ID, and then emit. So here is can be a little bit confusing. I created something for you, let's open it. Here, if we are in the socket server, and if we want to send something to client, which means our user, we are gonna use IO. If we want to send everyone inside this application, 
we are going to use emit if you want to send just one user we are going to say dot two and socket id and then emit and the next one if we are client we are going to always use socket we are not going to use this io and if we want to send something to server we are going to use emit and if we want to take something some event from this server we are going to use on i know you don't know anything about this but after practice you will understand everything so i want to send something to users i will use io and emit and i will write here my event name let's say welcome and here i will say my message hello this is socket server okay we sent users but we have to take this message in the client side let's create here use effect for temporary i will say use effect So whenever socket changes, I will say socket dot on because again, if we want to take anything from server, we will use socket dot on. I will write event name. What was the name? Welcome. And here, I will write message. And after that, I will console log this message. let's go to our app and here okay because in initial state we don't have any socket it's null here so i will write here question mark and right now i'm opening my console this is our previous error and here as you can see hello this is socket server i'm going to second user and here perfect so if i want to send this message to not all users just one user i should write here two and i should indicate here socket id and then emit but i don't know anybody's socket id here that because it changes whenever we connect this application let's write here let's delete this and write here console log and socket as you can see it's our socket and here this is our socket id pay attention here i will just refresh the page and i'm looking as you can see it's totally different number here so how i'm gonna send private message to user it's always changing so what I should do is creating here user array I will say let users I said that because we are gonna change this array so here I will say after every connection take user ID and socket ID from user so to take this I should send from client first let's delete this and i'm gonna use another use effect actually you don't have to write like this you can use user f here let's say const socket and it's gonna be user f and inside i will write this io and port number so i can delete this i don't need that so in this case I don't have to use use effect again and again I can just use this socket and current so I will write here use effect and insight let's check here again what I want to do I want to send something to socket server so I will use socket.emit so I can write here socket.current and emit let's say add user or send user whatever you say and i will send my user id and here my dependency will be user because it can change so i will save 
And here, what I'm gonna do, I will take this user ID from socket. So let's check again. I will come here. We are socket server right now. And I want to take something from client. So I will use socket.on. I will say socket.on my event name. What was the name? Add user. And here I will take this user ID and and then I'm going to use this socket ID and user ID. And I'm going to add inside this users array. But if I say here users.push, whenever I connect this application, it's going to add again and again same user. So I should filter this first. So I'm going to create here a function const add user. It's going to take user ID and socket ID. It should be equals and here arrow function and first I'm gonna check inside these users if the same user inside these users we are not gonna add if it's unique everything is okay I will say if users dot sum and for each user inside if user dot user ID equals this user ID here we can add this user so I will say users dot push and user ID and socket ID okay so I can run this function I will say add user and first I will pass my user ID and second socket ID I will say user ID and second one socket dot ID so after adding process, I can send all users inside this array to every client because we can take these online users and we can filter them and finally we can find our online friends. So let's do that. To send this from server to client, I should write here io.everyone. I'm not going to use to. It's going to be just emit. And let's say event name get users and here I will pass my users this array okay to take this I will use it here socket dot current dot on right now we are not sending anything we are taking from server I will write here get users and users And here, just console log this and see. As you can see, this is Jane, socket ID, user ID, and this is John. Let's close this tab, but before I will open new one, and let's copy this. If I close this, As you can see, nothing happens. That because we didn't remove any users for any disconnection. So let's open again. And here, I will write disconnection function. So here I will say socket.on. And here, disconnect. And a function here. If somebody disconnect from this socket server, I will write here somebody or a user disconnected and after that I will remove this user from this users array so let's create this function also const remove user so I will take here just socket ID so I'm gonna filter this array I will say users and new value will be users.filter for any user I will say user.socket id if it's not equal this socket id here our users array will be this new filtered array so basically we deleted this user okay 
here if there is any disconnection I will just remove this user and I will pass my socket ID and after that to see these users here I should send them again here I will copy this and paste let's refresh pages first okay there is a problem here because it's connecting a couple times so I have to create here use effect I think because every time this messenger refreshes it's assigning again so I will write here run this just once and make this socket dot current this connection let's try again I will refresh it's disconnected and here okay just once perfect there is just one user I'm waiting as you can see John is here also I will copy this and close again as you can see it's just one it's only Jane I'm coming back perfect we can see all online users right now okay so far so good so how can I send message I will write here let's say when connect when disconnect I already wrote here and here I will say send and get message let's separate them okay so how I'm gonna send message it's gonna be in the client side or server side of course it will be inside this client because we are the user whenever I send something it's gonna go to socket server first and after to Jane okay so I will write here socket dot on so let's check I will take something from client so I will use socket on and after taking this message I'm gonna send this to a specific user so I'm gonna use io2 socket id and emit and in the client side when I send this message I will use socket.emit for example for John I will send with socket emit and for Jane I will take this message with socket.on okay so I will write here send message and inside what it's gonna include it's gonna include my user ID and receiver ID and finally it's gonna be text so after taking this I will create arrow function here so I need to find specific user to send this text message so how I'm gonna find this user let's write here another function it's gonna be const get user what we know here we know user ID so we can use it I will say user ID and arrow function and I'm gonna return users and I will say find it's gonna look at each user inside users array and if user ID user dot user ID equals this user ID it's gonna find this user and return okay so inside this send message I will say const user and equals get user function and I will find this user by user ID and after that I will send this message to this user I will use IO and emit it's not emit because it's specific user I will say user dot socket ID and after that emit and let's say get message So what I'm gonna send here? 
I'm going to send sender, let's say just user ID and text. And of course, it's not going to be user ID, it's going to be receiver ID because we are sending message to this user and this is our sender ID. I can write here actually sender ID, it can be confusing. Okay, so basically we find this receiver and after that we use this socket ID of this receiver and send this message. Okay, let's try. I will go to messenger and here firstly I'm gonna send this message. Let's go to send handler, what was the name? Okay, handle submit. And here after try or before, doesn't matter, I will say socket dot current and this time I'm gonna use emit because I'm sending something and here event name send message and here let's check inside what we are sending sender ID receiver ID and text I will say sender ID it's gonna be our current users ID user dot ID Remember, we are taking this from this current user. And after that, receiver ID. So how can I find this receiver ID? I will just write here const receiver ID. And it's going to be current chat and members. And I will say find it's gonna check every member and if it this member which is user ID is not equal current users user ID it means it's our friend in the other word it's receiver so I will write here oops ID so I can send this like that you don't have to write here receiver again because it's same name and finally text will be new message okay so finally we sent our message so how we are gonna take this message it's really easy we have a function here so I will write here the last use effect I know it's really messy here I didn't want to split into that many components but it was not a good idea Maybe in your project you can split them. Anyway, I will write here use effect. And I will say socket and current and on. And here, what was the name? Get message. And here I will take this data, whatever you name it. And by the way, it's gonna be empty array. So I can actually write this inside another use effect. I don't have to write again and again. Where was our first use effect? Here. And here I will say. So what I'm gonna do is creating here arrival message. Arrival message and in the initial state it's gonna be null. And here I will update my arrival message. I will set set arrival message. And inside I will write my data. But I can't write this directly because their properties are different. In the MongoDB, if you remember, we have sender and text and created at. So in this data, our sender is sender ID. I will say data dot sender ID and text is same data dot text and created at will be let's give here comma it's gonna be current date I will say date dot now so it's gonna create new date so if there is any changes in this arrival message we are gonna update our messages it's the last part. Let's write here. 
use effects. I set its last, but I forgot this. We have to write here arrival message and, and whenever arrival message is changed, I'm gonna check here something. But remember, in the initial state, it's null. So it can be empty also. So I will control this. If there is arrival message, I will say current chat. Of course, it can be empty also. I will check it. And members and includes. If it includes arrival message dot sender, then we can update our messages. Why I did this here? That because if I choose here Lama, for example, and if John sent any message to us, we are not supposed to see this here because it's the conversation with Lama. If I'm in the John, I can see this message. So I'm controlling this. So I will say set messages. Everything inside will be same. So I will use spread operator. You can write here messages and arrival message. But if you do that, you have to use here other dependency messages here. So you can use here a function. Let's say previous or whatever you say. And if you write here previous right now, you don't have to write this dependency. It's only current chat. Let's write here. So that's all. It can be confusing, but it really makes sense. If you are confused, watch this part again. Okay, let's try. I will refresh everything. And here, let's close. I'm opening Lama. And here, Jane. If I write something here, hey Jane. And I'm coming here, as you can see, nothing. If I open John, it's from our DB. And if I write something again, test, test. As you can see, it's instantly here. If I send something and send, and it's here. Perfect. So it works. Let's open this like that. It's not responsive, but I'm writing, sending, it's here. Perfect, it works. Okay, right now I can choose any conversation from here, but I cannot see my friends and I can choose anything from here. Let's take care of this. As remember, we created our chat online component. Let's open it. Chat online. Okay, it's here. So right now, if you remember, we get user and console log this. And instead of this, I'm gonna create new use state and update my users. So let's write here online users and it's gonna be empty array. So let's set this online users. Instead of console log, I will say set online users and what was the name? Users. Okay. So I can send this. So let's use this online users. I will send this to my chat online component online users and here I'm gonna send my current user ID because we are gonna filter these users I will say current user or current ID it's gonna be user.id and finally when I click this it's gonna update this current chat so I'm gonna send set current chat okay Let's come here, online users, what was more, current ID and set current chat. 
Okay. So firstly, I'm gonna use use state hook here, and I'm gonna create two arrays. First one will be my all friends. If you remember, we have all information about this current user, including followings. So I will say const friends and set friends. It's gonna be use state and initial state will be empty array. And for the same thing for online friends, Okay, so let's fetch every followings. Use effect. And here, for now, empty array. Let's go to API and let's check. Here inside roots and users, get users. And here we have get friends. And its URL is friends and this user ID parameter. I can use it. I will say const get friends is gonna be async function and I will say const res it's gonna be await and axios oops it's gonna be get method and here users and friends current user ID and here let's import and I will say set friends and here response and data. And here I have to write current ID and I will call this function here. Okay, so our all friends are ready. Let's check this if you want. Friends. Okay, we can see because I forgot your slash and again as you can see this is my friend profile picture username and ID if you remember I didn't want to get all informations so inside here I just filter this I just take username and profile picture okay so how i'm gonna use these users so right now i can filter these users i will write here another use effect and inside i will say set online friends and here i will filter these friends and filter and for each friend I will say let's take this online users if this online users includes any of these friends ID it's gonna update these online friends and here dependencies let's check here it's gonna be online users and friends okay So right now I'm able to use these online friends. Let's come here and I will delete these additional friends. I will use just one of them. Okay. I will use map online friends dot map and for each online I'm gonna return this div. Okay, let's change this. It's gonna be online dot username and here let's delete this source and it's gonna be let's take this public folder first. I can take this from here I think okay and I will say if online friend has any profile picture I will copy this and I'm gonna use public folder plus this profile picture. If there is no profile picture I will use public folder again and this time it's gonna be person 
and no avatar.png. So let's check. You see here question mark because it can be empty. Okay, there's a typo here. Let's check. Includes. Okay, we can't see anything. I think we have a mistake here. Okay, let's check this online users. Maybe we couldn't get this. I will just console log. Oops. Online users. Okay, they are here. Oh, okay, it's not returning user. It's returning this socket user. So I have to check this messenger. So I will come here, online users. Okay, I forgot just filtering this because it should include only user IDs. So I'm gonna write here user, which means our current user and followings. And I will say filter and for each one, I will say users dot these users from socket. And I'm gonna say some Right now, I'm gonna check this socket and I will check if this user ID matches with our friend ID. So I will say here for each user, you dot user ID equals this followings. So let's see right now. Users, oh, of course, it should be users. Okay, it's here. Perfect. So if I go to John, John doesn't have any friend. So there is nothing here. For Jane, we can see this friend. So one more time, it can be complex for you. I just take all followings from current user, because if I write here, current user here, there is a followers and followings and inside followings it's an array and it includes each user IDs of these followings. So I will look at these followings, these user IDs and for each user ID I will look into these socket users and if this user ID of socket user equals our friend ID it's gonna set online users. If you make this practice by yourself you will understand better so right now, and this is our console log here, I will delete this and this also. So everything works perfectly. One more thing, when I click this, I wanna set a conversation. So how I'm gonna do this, I will say here for online friend, I will say on click and inside Let's say handle click. I will create this function here, const handle click. So what I'm gonna do is writing here, oh, just this friend. Okay, so I'm gonna take this user and it's gonna be async function because we are gonna fetch our conversation. So here, let's say try and catch console log this error and here I will say const response so how I'm gonna fetch this conversation let's go to our API and here conversations as you remember we just created new conversation and get all conversations of one user but we didn't write here third option so I will say here get conversation includes to user ID. Okay, let's write here router is gonna be get and here I will say find let's give here first user ID. I will write here first and then 
second user ID. Okay, I will say async function and here request a response and inside this try catch and error I will send this error I will say res status and 500 and JSON and error okay and here I will say const conversation and it's gonna be await and for our conversation model and I'm gonna find just one because there is only one conversation includes this user ID and this user ID so I will write inside my condition I will say remember what we did here I can actually copy this and like that and right now it's not gonna be only one user let's copy this here and this time it's gonna be two users second user ID and right now it's not gonna be in it's gonna be all look into these members and for all elements should include this first user and second user and ordering is not important it should be just inside these members okay so I can use this find method so I will say axios and get I will say users and find and slash I will add here actually we can write this like that back tick here and first one will be our current user ID what was the name current ID and second one this users ID dot ID okay we can write this as second parameter doesn't matter as I said right now we have response here it's our conversation so what I'm gonna do I will just set this current chat it's gonna be response dot data let's see right now if I click this John okay something wrong oh I said users it should be conversation and I forgot this time I wait I hope it will work this time I'm clicking it's not clicking what's wrong here oh extra curly brackets here let's delay it I'm clicking okay it's not coming so let's check our conversations jazz here oh I didn't send this conversation of course so I will say response status 200 and I will send this conversation and right now let's try as you can see it's here I will refresh I will make sure there is no error here I'm clicking Epson let's make this okay last time I will try I'm coming chain and here I'm in the lemma I will say last tests I will send there is nothing here I will go to John last tests and I will say something Awesome. So we finished our project. As I said, in the future we are gonna create another chat application. It's gonna include group conversations, blue tick, writing notification, deleting message feature, maybe blocking user, something like that. But for now, it's perfectly enough. I think you understood how Socket.io works. So right now, 
you are able to create some other projects or just examples with Socket.io. Maybe you can create notification events like send notification and get notification as we did here with messages. Then you can use it for the notification bar on the top. When a user likes your post, for example, or follows you or whatever, you can send notification. If you understood this application, it's just a piece of cake I think, I believe in you, you can do this. <laughs> ok, I hope you liked it, if you learned something new today, please like the video and subscribe the channel. Don't forget to follow our Facebook page, it's really good opportunity to meet other developers, you can share your experiences and find new inspirations and you can ask your questions. Ok. That's all. I hope I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.